Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you guys about the Universal Book of Mormon. Now, I know this seems more like a Thursday thought topic, but I did not have time to make a Thursday thought this week. And so I'm going to kind of combine them. And I think that's easy to do because the Book of Mormon is Scripture. And the Universal Book of Mormon is a big part of the ecumenical movement that is the Fellowship of Christ. So what is the Universal Book of Mormon? Well, back in 2019, I started a project where I, I basically I built a website and I, I wanted an app. I was attending Community of Christ and I wanted to be able to pull up the Book of Mormon on my phone. And, you know, I, I wasn't gonna be able, I wasn't able to make an app for it. But I wanted something, I didn't want like a, there's a piece of paper or a PDF you could download or print off that has like how the OPV and the REV, the OPV being the uh, or Orson Pratt version, the uh, Salt Lake City Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints version of the Book of Mormon chapter and verses. And the RAV, which is what the RLDS or Community of Christ is currently using. So basically... There are other versions of the Book of Mormon out there, but these are the two chapter and versing styles that most people use. And so in 2019, I, I wanted a way to be able to click on an app and go to the Book of Mormon wherever I needed to be. And so I just made a website that did that, a web app, if you will, so I could read the scriptures. And I thought, you know, this is, once I got done you know, putting it all together, I was like, you know, this is a really, really good way to cross pollinate the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Because you're kind of, I don't want to say you're trapped in one branch of Latter-day Saint movement or another, but when you go to move, all of a sudden you have a, a potentially a different Book of Mormon, most likely a different Doctrine and Covenants, and you have all these new things that, that make it less familiar. Imagine you know, it's, this is easier probably to explain to uh, a Catholic or a Protestant, but imagine going to a Christian church and all of a sudden the Bible is completely chapter and verse differently. And so someone says, go to Genesis 4, 7. And you're like, oh, this I can't. It, it, it's not that's the same verse. Now, in the Joseph Smith translation, that is correct. That That is an actual problem. I have thought about the idea of doing the same thing with, with that book of scripture as well, but it's not as widely used in our movement. But with the Book of Mormon, th this literally happens. It's a real problem. And so by putting this together initially for myself, I recognized that this was something that we could use as a movement. And so because of that, I put it out as a free PDF. Uh, and I, I licensed it in 2020 under the Creative Commons license. So anybody can take it and print it and even sell it if they want to. I, you know, I I wanted to get out there. So, you know, if, if like 30 different people are selling this book, it's it's formatted correctly. So you just take it to Lulu, and which is a, a book publisher, lulu.com. You can go through their system and you can print copies. You can sell copies. You just can't change the text. And, and I will say this though. You know, technically, the fellowship owns the uh, copy left, I think is what they call Creative Commons license. So if, let's say, for example, the Salt Lake City Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Brighamites decided that they wanted to use this to help people move back and forth. Uh, you know, they sell their, their Book of Mormon. They give it away for free, but they also sell it for like $2. So they could make this very widely available. So let's say that they, they call me up and they say, Dave, we want to add our footnotes to this. As long as they ask permission, then I can put something together that gives them permission to do that. And the one, the one thing that is that that I will insist on, and the fellowship will insist on, is that they also release it in the exact same license, not a copyright, but so that anybody can print it and sell it as long as they don't make any changes to it. So if you belong to a church that is using the Book of Mormon and you need your own version and you want to add footnotes or make changes to it, just reach out to me and talk to me and we'll we'll figure something out. The whole thing behind this isn't to point people to a church, but to open up everyone to all Latter-day Saint churches. And that is what 
an ecumenical movement is. It's what the fellowship is all about. It makes this it makes it easier for all of us to fellowship in Jesus Christ. So that's a Thursday thought, I guess, and a sales pitch. How is it a message? Jesus Christ is the solid foundation that our religion is built upon. The Book of Mormon is what has given those of us that call this movement our religion that spiritual witness, that testimony, that, that this gospel of Jesus Christ is true. It's not some other gospel. You know, Paul warns against another gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not to say that other churches, other Protestants, Catholics, etc., aren't also the gospel. This is the same gospel that's in the Bible. But we got to that relationship with God because of our testimony of the Book of Mormon. Because the Book of Mormon, I've talked about this before, unlocks that spirit of prophecy and revelation within us. The Book of Mormon tells us, take this to the Lord. Ask if it's true. The Lord will say it is, and he has, to literally millions of people. When I talk to people who leave Mormonism, usually it's because of some human error. After they leave, they'll say things like, oh, well, there weren't horses or what have you, and things are in the Book of Mormon. And whether or not there were horses, I, I know that there are people who debate that. I'm not going to get into that debate. Um, but I, I will, and, and the other things that, that in my opinion, distract from the Book of Mormon. Um, I know other people would use a different word, but I'm going to say distract. What happens is they get upset because of some policy of a church. And I've seen this not just in, I, I don't want people thinking that this is about the Salt Lake City Church because it's not. I've seen it happen in Community of Christ. I've seen it happen in other smaller branches where something that a church itself makes a decision, moves in a certain direction. And so all of a sudden they start looking for problems. And I'm not saying problems aren't there, but they become easier to find when we think that this is the only true church and it's tied to the Book of Mormon. When we like that church, we make all kinds of excuses for problems of the Book of Mormon, right? Just like as Christians, all Christians everywhere make all kinds of excuses for the problems in the Bible. It is what it is. But when we love the church that we're in, the people that we're with, those problems are just an annoying fly on the wall. It buzzes around, but maybe you swat at it, maybe you don't. It doesn't really matter because it's about building relationships in the community and hopefully building a personal relationship with God. So my Sabbath message for you today is this. How can we, I'm going to ask it as a question, how can we use the Universal Book of Mormon to reach out to each other and do what I like to call cross-pollinate, learning from one another? Can we take that Book of Mormon and go and visit another church and comfortably learn with them, learn from them, and then take the things you've learned there back to your home church. I'm not telling anyone to leave whatever church they're in. I'm saying if we're going to be good neighbors, we have to acknowledge that there are other people in other houses, and it's okay to go and knock on the door and get to know them a little bit. And it's my hope and prayer that this book will help people do exactly that. So that's my message this Sabbath, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.